The ratings for this past Saturday's edition of AW Collision are in, as well as the ratings for AW Battle of the Bouts 8 on TNT. Drew McIntyre reportedly has yet to sign a new contract with WWE. Billy Corgan says the NWA can't afford CM Punk, but if he wants to have a good time in pro wrestling, he should join the National Wrestling Alliance. PCO is the first signing of the TNA Wrestling Era as he has re-signed a new contract with Impact Wrestling. Also an update on a possible hint that an AW December pay per view is coming. A big champion versus championship match that was teased for WWE Survivor Series reportedly is not going to happen and we've got some details as to why that is. And the New Day tease possibly jumping from Raw to SmackDown. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling. Let's start off talking about the ratings for AEW Collision on TNT, as well as Battle of the Bouts 8. Some good news for Collision, some not so great news for Battle of the Bouts. Now, Saturday night's episode of AEW Collision averaged 518,000 viewers on TNT, which is up 2.8% from the previous week. It's also the best audience total for the show since September 23rd. Collision drew a 0.16 rating in the 1849 demographic. That's up 14.3% from last week and ties the second highest rating the show has done since August 17. Now, the show had its usual strong competition from college football, which dominated the cable charts as one would expect, as well as the MLB National League Championship Series on TBS, which was the top non football programming on TV with 4.6 million viewers and a 1.11 rating in the 1849 demographic. Now, what about the show that followed AEW Collision on Saturday, that being Battle of the Bouts? Well, Battle of the Bouts didn't fare as well as the AEW Collision on TNT because Battle of the Bouts 8, which immediately followed Collision on TNT, a three-hour block of AEW programming Saturday, averaged 397,000 viewers and drew a 0.13 rating in the 18-49. Now, that's down 24.2% in overall viewers and down 13.3% in the 18 to 49 demographic from the previous episode that aired back in July. It's the second lowest total audience of the eight Battle of the Bout specials that have aired to date and the fourth lowest 18 to 49 rating. The last time both shows aired back to back on Saturday, Battle of the Bouts retained 19.5% of the collision lead in with overall viewers and 75% of the 18 to 49 audience. This time around though, that wasn't the case. This time around, the show retained only 76.6% of the overall viewers, but 81.3% of the 18 to 49 audience. So what are your thoughts on the ratings for AEW Collision as well as AEW Battle of the Bouts 8? What are your critical responses to both shows? Is it just a case of Battle of the Bouts that these are contracted TV specials at this point? What are your thoughts when it comes to the ratings for Collision being up to? Let me know your thoughts about it as always in the comments section below. And what about Drew McIntyre, his future with the WWE? Well, as of right now, it's still fairly uncertain. Now, for months now, there has been speculation about the future of former WWE champion Drew McIntyre and his deal with WWE ending soon. McIntyre's contract was actually initially set to expire at the end of this year, but due to WWE adding time onto it to account for time away due to injuries and any other absences, it now runs through WrestleMania through April. So while there's plenty of time left, it's always getting closer. The clock is ticking and time is rapidly moving away. And the two sides are reportedly still yet to have agreed on terms over a new contract. Now, the key word here is yet, because as noted, he's still with the company through April regardless of what happens. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer reported, quote, I do not believe he signed. His contract was to expire at the end of the year, but because of all the injury time accrued, it's through April. It's basically a numbers game. It's not like he's a guy who's looking to leave. It's just a numbers game. He wants a certain number and they did not offer that certain number. End quote. Now, McIntyre has a big match on the horizon. He's set to challenge Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship at WWE Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia on November 4. He's also in the middle of a possible heel turn, plans for which were somewhat derailed when WWE released his temporary tag team partner, Matt Riddle, last month. Both McIntyre and Rollins agreed on Raw that neither of them would ask Judgment Day to help them during their Crown Jewel match. Of course, we get any more updates on McIntyre's future with WWE. We'll let you know in a future video. 
Now, is there any chance, possibly, that CM Punk could sign with the National Wrestling Alliance? Well, Billy Corgan says that uh, he should actually consider it. He says it should be a possibility. Billy Corgan has commented on the National Wrestling Alliance interest in CM Punk. CM Punk was released from his WWE contract at the beginning of September following an incident at AW All In where Tony Khan stated he feared for his life. It's unknown if or when Punk will be able to sign for another promotion should he choose to do so. NWA owner Billy Corgan appeared on the Matt Men with Andrew Zarian podcast and was asked about NWA's interest in Punk. Corgan started by saying he's known Punk since he was just starting out in wrestling and Punk's been kind to him over the years, even getting him tickets to Money in the Bank back in 2011, arguably Punk's most famous match for WWE against John Cena. Quote, many people behind the scenes have asked me, should we make a play for Punk? Have you reached out to Punk? The answer in terms of reaching out is no. I respect him a lot. He deserves top money. He's a top star. That almost sounds self-defeating. You're almost admitting that you wouldn't want him. No, trust me, the NWA would go hand over fist to have Phil walk through the door and be part of the NWA, even for a pay-per-view, said Corgan. What I would say to Phil, and I'm not trying to use this as an open forum, I'm saying to you what I would say to Phil, and again, I have not reached out and I certainly know how to get in touch with him. What I could say to him, he would have a lot of fun in the NWA. I think Phil, the person, loves professional wrestling. He's had his public confrontation. I'm very similar. I got sued by a record company for $150 million. I eventually made a deal with them and continued working for them. I've had massive, massive battles behind the scenes with every segment of the record and touring business, some of which aren't public. I have a reputation in rock and roll behind the scenes. If Phil, the person, has a rep with whoever, he doesn't have that rep with me because I feel I understand where he's coming from. Corgan noted that only Punk could cut the pipe bomb promo because it was a promo that came from the heart. Quote, that man loves professional wrestling. He may not love the professional wrestling business, but he loves professional wrestling. My only appeal to Punk would be, if you want to have some fun, I can't pay you what you're worth, but if you want to have some fun, come have some fun in the NWA. We'll kick some ass, we'll have some laughs, and I'll buy you a vegan sandwich, he said. Corgan continued by saying, I'm the rock star. I've been a rock star for over 30 years. There are moments in my life as a rock star where I've played Madison Square Garden, sold it out. I've done it. There is no argument, but there are times where you've been there and done that, like Phil has, where you need to go back to the ground and say, how did I get here? Where is this thing that I loved doesn't feel like the thing that I love anymore? Where has it gotten so twisted and turned around and somehow I'm the bad guy on something that I don't feel like I'm the bad guy in? I'm not trying to get in the middle of what's happened. I wasn't there, but I do understand the man's heart. I feel I'm not his friend. I wouldn't claim to be his friend, but I would like to see him, whether it's with the NWA or any other promotion, that he recaptures his smile. He deserves that. The business should rally around guys like Punk because the business benefits from stars. Corn, uh, Corgan equated Punk to uh, returning to Shawn Michaels, returning to WWE after his retirement and how he looked happy and rejuvenated. Quote, Punk belongs in this business. He's a star. He needs to be treated like a star. I don't think anybody deserves to be treated like a prima donna including myself but there has to be a way to balance those forces where the guy who loves professional wrestling can do what he loves to do even if it's behind the scenes maybe he doesn't work in front of the camera for a while so there you go billy corgan suggesting that maybe he should come to the nwa if he wants to have fun could you see that happening let me know your thoughts about that pco assigned a new contract with impact wrestling after his previous contract had expired impact wrestling has confirmed what they're calling the first signing of the new era of tna wrestling starting on january 13 2024 impact wrestling will rebrand as tna wrestling as announced at bound for glory the company are gearing up for a rebrand with PCO being the first signing under the new identity. Per the press release on the Impact Wrestling website, they said, quote, the first official signing of the new era of TNA Wrestling was announced this morning by company president Scott Demore. PCO, who won the four-person Monsters Ball match this past Saturday at the 2023 Bound for Glory pay-per-view extravaganza in Chicago, has signed a new contract. Terms were not disclosed. Quote, I really wanted to be part of the new era of TNA Wrestling and Scott Demore made me an offer I could not a fuse, PCO said. Impact Wrestling is returning to its iconic total non-stop action TNA Wrestling name, starting with its January 2024 pay-per-view special, Hard to Kill, which will originate from the first time edit from the Palm Casino Resort near the world-famous Strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. The 2024 Hard to Kill pay-per-view is set for Saturday night, January 13, with a second night of action-packed pro wrestling, the Snake Eyes Extravaganza show at the Palm on Sunday, January 14, which will be taped to air on the company's flagship weekly TV show, Impact, airing every Thursday night on Access TV. 
PCO made his return to Impact Wrestling at the 2022 Hard to Kill pay-per-view. In September 2023, of course, it was reported that PCO would be leaving the company when his contract expired at the end of October 2023. PCO had reportedly given notice of his intention to leave Impact Wrestling. However, he's now re-signed with the company. What are your thoughts on PCO signing a new deal with Impact, soon to be TNA Wrestling? Now, there's been lots of talks about AEW adding more pay-per-views to their calendar this year. And an upcoming Ring of Honor pay-per-view is maybe the key to a new AEW pay-per-view actually taking place in December. An upcoming Ring of Honor pay-per-view will only be available on Honor Club and it's reportedly down to an unannounced new All Elite Wrestling pay-per-view. As previously reported, Ring of Honor Final Battle 2023 takes place on December 15 and will exclusively be on Honor Club. This is a change to the previous arrangement, which has seen Ring of Honor pay-per-views on fights Bleach Report Live and other pay-per-view outlets since March of 2022. Dave Meltzer addressed the change of arrangements on Wrestling Observer Radio, saying he believed the reason for Ring of Honor being exclusive to Honor Club was likely due, at least in part, to the fact there's another AEW pay-per-view planned for later in the same month, and Tony Khan wouldn't want to sell two pay-per-views so close together. Quote, I think you're right. I believe there's an AEW pay-per-view on the 30th, might be the 29th, but there's going to be one at the end. So Ring of Honor will not be on Bleach Report. It won't be available on television. It won't be available on pay-per-view.com. It won't be available anywhere except for Honor Club, and it won't be an extra charge for Honor Club either. The Honor Club subscription will include the pay-per-view. Our AEW's next scheduled pay-per-view is Full Gear on November 18 at the Kia Forum in California. This has traditionally been the final pay-per-view of the calendar year, with Revolution taking place in early March, although it did take place on February 29 in 2020. At the time of this recording, a December pay-per-view hasn't been announced by AEW, though AEW New Year Smash has formed special episodes of Dynamite and Rampage in the past. The 2021 and 2022 installments of AEW New Year Smash took place on December 29, 2021 and December 28, 2022. Tony Khan has mentioned he'd be open to adding more AEW pay-per-views, but hasn't specified how many. Wrestle Dream was a new addition to AEW's pay-per-view calendar at the beginning of October. It has been reported we could move to a model next year where we could see AEW have a pay-per-view per month similar to WWE and other pro wrestling promotions. So if we get any more details on that moving forward, we'll let you know. Now, a t- champion versus champion match was teased for Survivor Series, but it doesn't look like it's going to be happening. Despite a tease on Raw, a champion versus championship match between Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns isn't apparently on the Survivor Series card. Now, during a backstage segment, Rhea Ripley offered her support to Seth Rollins to take him from just a world champion to the world champion. She would go on to say that while Judgment Day have supported the bloodline previously, alliances could change. Rollins said he wasn't interested in becoming anything like Roman Reigns, and there was already plenty for the visionary to think about, especially with Damian Priest holding the money in the bank briefcase. For many years in a row until last year, WWE had held brand versus brand, champion versus champion matches at Survivor Series, but as for Rollins versus Reigns on November 25 this year, Dave Meltzer would speak on Wrestling Observer Radio saying, quote, I can tell you for sure that's not on this year's Survivor Series. As of right now, no matches have been announced for the upcoming event at the Allstate Arena in Chicago. Previous reports have stated that a War Games match will be part of the card, though it won't be Raw versus SmackDown. Of course, due to a demand for tickets, WWE has recently increased the number of seats available for the Premium Live event as well. But before Survivor Series, WWE, of course, has Crown Jewel coming up on November 4 in Saudi Arabia. So we've got to get through Crown Jewel first before we know anything about Survivor Series. Finally, the New Day have teased they might jump brands from Smack from Raw to SmackDown, rather, particularly interesting given the introduction of new general managers for both shows. The New Day have championship gold on their mind and have both Raw and SmackDown GMs in their sights for the opportunity. Their plans were revealed in a Raw Talk segment for the October 23rd episode of Raw. Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston defeating the Alpha Academy on an episode that also saw Akira Tozawa join Chad Gable's faction. The New Day would defeat Gable and Otis with match highlights being seen all over social media. Speaking backstage to a momentary speechless Jackie Redmond, Woods and, uh, Woods and Kingston set out their vision for the New Day saying, quote, this is Woods. It happens when you see the new day in the ring sometimes you go speechless it just happens like that kingston said quote look at us now as you can see this ladder right here it's just like us climbing the ranks in the tag team division Redmond would comment that this isn't the first time the team have climbed the ranks, with the New Day replying, first Kingston saying, quote, not our first time and certainly not the last. Wood said, quote, think about this. We're fighting to climb the ranks in this division so we can then again become the WWE World Tag Team Champions. Woods would then reveal the New Day's big plan to make their goals happen, saying, quote, and if it's going to be on Monday Night Raw, maybe, maybe we go to talk to a man called Adam Pearce, considering that match we just had was so piercing. 
Kingston would kindly explain that the um, the the reason he said that was because Pierce and Pierce they have different spellings but they sound the same. Which would then go on to tease a potential move to SmackDown by going on to say, and if Pierce won't give us that tag match, you know we used to run SmackDown, so maybe we'll go talk to Nick Aldis because SmackDown is definitely going to want all this. So anything's possible there is brand versus brand warfare going on right now so i have to wait and see but there you go guys this latest pro wrestling news for you be sure to smash the like and the like button be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner as always let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and i'll speak to you again very very soon hey guys thank you for watching listening streaming or however you come across this video today be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner thank you very much and i'll speak to you again very soon